I'm here with Brian Bricciolato. How are you doing today? It's good, sir. How you doing? Oh, dude, I'm tired as hell. But nonetheless, we're here at Long Beach right now, <laughs> yep. and we're here to talk about three comics. You actually just ended a run, an amazing run, originally with uh, Francis Manipul. Correct. And I think how many issues was it alone on Detective? Uh, well, Francis and I did 16 issues. Uh, I think Francis did maybe 14 of the 16. Yeah, uh, yeah. The last arc we uh, we came up with together, and then I finished it out. Like I think yeah. he. He helped plot out uh, the first half of, the, of our last arc. Which at so. that point, it was originally with Batman, and eventually we got into the story of Gordon becoming Batman, and you were able to close it out with that. Yeah, I mean, we, we told our stories in, in very, uh, you know, in arcs that were self-contained. So, yeah. uh, you know, our first two arcs, like, you wouldn't need to, I think, read uh, uh, the last arc to, you know, to enjoy to that. Yeah. But, uh uh, you know, we just, when they did the Bad Gordon thing, we rolled with it. So Yeah, which was awesome because uh, I believe... Uh, you guys have the story with Bullock, and that's what I loved about right. reading uh, Batman Detective. It concentrated on the actual detectives that were on the case, like Bullock. Yeah, I mean, it was a practical decision more than anything. Uh, you know, uh, Batman is the big, uh, you know, banner book, and, and all the, like, you know, like, life-changing stuff happens yeah, yeah. In, in Scott Snyder's book, and it's awesome. So we decided to go the other way and say, well, let's just tell detective stories, street level, and, and a little more grounded as sort of... Uh, uh, not the anti-Batman, but just, uh, you know, exploring a different area of the Bat universe yes. than the main book does. Yeah. Well, and you kept his mohawk, which was awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, you know, you gotta... Yeah, it, it, it looks ridiculous, but at the same time, you're like, I could live with this. This is completely Yeah, I think okay. I made... I think I had uh, uh, Harvey make fun of it in yes, issue 44. Yes, which was awesome. <laughs> uh, but that run is now done. Yeah. yeah. Are you going to be doing anything else with DC? I am. I, I can't announce what it is. Oh. It's... Uh, it hasn't been, you know, officially announced yet. Yeah. I can tell you that it's a a solo villain. Okay. That's all I can tell you. I kind of possibly have a clue. I'm not going to give you a yay or nay. You can guess to them, but I'm not going to... I'm going to guess he might have a couple of jokes up his sleeve. Nah. No? I'm not even close. Yeah. But nonetheless, <laughs> you are actually writing Injustice, Gods Among Us. Correct. Now, this is actually a sleeper hit from DC. They kind of put it out there like, let's see what we could go with this. And it's been going four books, I guess four chap. How would you describe uh, it? Four years. I mean, four Tom, years. Tom Taylor started it. Yes. And, and the reason why it's still going on now is because of Tom. Yeah. I mean, he took something that could have been just some dumb, you know, uh, video game, comic book, and he made it this amazing world with all these cool stories and you know he made Harley awesome and yeah. uh, he just did so many great things in the first year I think that sort of propelled the book and, and got a really large uh, you know following so yeah. I picked up uh, where he left off uh, midway through year three yeah. uh, and finished out the year of magic and then uh, now we're almost done uh, I'm almost done with year four which is the year of the gods yeah so so how was it taking on uh, that type of story was the editorial like we want to drive this way or was it due to it being a brand new world that technically hasn't really been ventured what was limited and what was not limited on it well i mean it's actually the limitations are basically the inciting incident of the video game happens five years before the video game yeah so we're filling in the five years in between the inciting incident when superman kills joker yes. to you know the, when the video game takes place so we know where our series is going to end up. So, like, you can't kill Superman, you can't kill Batman, you yeah. can't, you know, anybody who's in the video game, you know they're going to survive. Yes. But, like, everybody else is obviously fair game, you know. I mean, he killed uh, uh, Green Arrow in year one, I think, you yeah. know. Um, I think I killed Montoya in year four, you know, like, like there's... How could you? Such well, a we, have, we also brought her back in the main universe, so, you know, it was even Steven. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, with year four coming close to conclusion, what can we look forward to in year five of Injustice? Uh, year five is going to sort of uh, ramp us up and get us back to where the status quo is in the video game. Yes. Uh, but I'm calling year five year of the villains. Yes. So, uh, it'd, be, it'd be very villain-centric. Okay. So, yeah. Well, obviously, you're wearing a DC hat, but you have something else, and obviously wearing oh, yeah. the image shirt. Okay. <laughs> That's how you convert. You're, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're like Clark Kent. You take right. off the glasses, you become Superman. You put them right. back on, you're good to go. Now I'm indie. So, yeah. <laughs> you have Sons of the Devil that came out. Yes, we sir. actually got to interview and talk, talk about it briefly at Long Beach Comic Expo. Mm -hmm. It's out. We're four issues deep now. Yeah. Can you tell some of the people that haven't read it yet what Sons of the Devil is all about? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to do it without spoiling. It's about cults. It's about family. It takes place across... Uh, basically three decades. Uh, there's a cult in the late 80s, 
and uh, the cult leader is twisted and thinks he's made a deal with the devil to sacrifice his entire flock and his nine babies. Uh, he has like nine infant children that he is the father of. Yeah. Uh, the night before the big sacrifice, one of the mothers finds out and she uh, saves the babies and kidnaps them. And uh, the rest of the cult is killed uh, and the babies survive. So it's 25 years later and uh, David Daly, who's the cult leader, has returned and he wants his kids. Which David actually... They're adults now, but he wants them. David now lives in technically Venice, I think it was, correct? No, oh, Okay, so the story uh, revolves around one of the nine children named Travis. Travis. So Travis right. lives in Venice, California, yeah. So it's definitely, you know, has that vibe to it. And he doesn't know anything about his past. He's a, he's a, uh, a, a guy from foster care. He's had a violent upbringing. He's got abandonment issues. Uh, but he's a good guy just trying to, you know, make his way, you know, working on Lincoln Boulevard, uh, you know, uh, doing his thing. Golden heart, but the shortest fuse in the world. Yeah, he will headbutt a mofo. <laughs> he will definitely. So what made you decide to to not only make this story, but have a character that's like that? Is it you're relatable to it or was it just like, this is the story and I need this type of character to drive it? See, I don't think I needed that type of character. I think it was interesting to me. I think I think. You know, I looked at what would happen, like my big pitch is, you know, what if, you know, you were a, an orphan, you don't know who your parents were, and one day you find out your dad is Charles Manson, what would that do to you? Yeah. You know what I mean? And what would happen if Charles Manson got out and came after you? Like, what would that do to you? So yeah. That was kind of like my thought process uh, when I created the character. So I knew that he was an orphan, and I knew he was going to have abandonment issues, and he's going to have some self-worth issues because... You know, he doesn't know why his he doesn't have his parents and why they didn't love yeah. him enough to keep him. Yeah. So you know, I just sort of extrapolated what type of person uh, could evolve from that beginning, and I came yeah. up with Travis. So we're about to conclude the first story arc with issue five that's coming out next yeah. month, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, what can we look forward to in the second story arc coming on? It's going to get worse for Travis. Uh, the first uh, five issues have been a lot of uh, sort of world building and things have been going on behind his back and behind the scenes. He doesn't really know exactly what's going on. And in, in the second arc, it's going to you know smack him in the face. Like he's going to come face to face. He doesn't know that that his dad is alive yet. You know, like like we all know because we see we see him in the book. Yeah. But he doesn't know. Uh, you know, in the second arc, he's going to find out. Nice. Yeah. And of course, last but not least, where can we find you on the interweb? Uh, I'm on Twitter, uh, Brian Booch, uh, B-R-I-A-N-B-O-O-C-H, and I'm on Facebook. And uh, I think there's a Sons of the Devil website also. Yeah, so. and go ahead. If you guys want to get completely filled in, go on to YouTube, type in Sons of the Devil, and there's a nice little synopsis as well on there, a nice little, right, little yeah. video. Uh, we, we did a short film. Yes. Uh, we did a short film, so you can watch that on Vimeo or on YouTube. So go ahead and check that out. Thank you, Brian. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, man.